Let's go! LSU, Kansas State in the Texas Bowl. And I know you guys just want to talk about the future. Brian Kelly and Mike Dimbrock and Matt House and what's going to happen next. But we owe it to this year's team to talk about what could be... Well, it just is the worst LSU roster of the modern era uh, because this could get very ugly against Kansas State on Tuesday night. But the Tigers are going to fight to the death tomorrow versus Kansas State. And we're going to give you a few big keys to look out for, starting off with the first big question. Will this game even be played? And right now, LSU is below 40 scholarship Players and all of those players may not be fully healthy. So, just from an initial audit looking at the roster, the position groups that I think are in the most danger quarterback and running back on offense and on defense. Even though the defensive line's a little thin, I think they'll be fine there. But linebacker and defensive back look to be utter disasters right now. And we can break down even deeper how badly those positions are, but uh, it's kind of painful to talk about. Whereas with running back, there are only two scholarship running backs healthy as Ty Davis Price has opted out. Uh, At linebacker, there's only a few scholarship linebackers there. Baskerville isn't on the depth chart. Uh, Damon Clark obviously opted out to get ready for the NFL draft. And then the defensive backfield is just a mess as well, as you guys have been looking at the depth chart. Now that hasn't lowered the enthusiasm to play one final game as you guys have seen this photo here uh the texas bowl which is a bowl that lsu has been to before it was leonard fournette versus patrick mahomes uh we won that game but mahomes did go off uh kansas state (laughs) not the same team as texas tech we'll get to kansas state in just a second but what's really interesting is that a lot of the players have been very energetic and excited to play in one final bowl game and i am happy we are playing in this game but To me, an even bigger story is this quarterback room where Max Johnson, of course, at the transfer portal, he goes to Texas A&M, and the guy that you see jumping up and down in the air is Garrett Nussmeyer, who has been there throughout the bowl preparation, and according to Brody Miller of The Athletic, there is something very interesting going on with Nuss. So Garrett Nussmeyer was given the opportunity to play this game it was up to him as he has already played four games and if he plays a fifth he will not be able to retain his red shirt brad davis uh the interim head coach who i like a lot said uh that garrett nussmeyer has been practicing but he won't reveal if the ncaa cleared his waiver to play the bowl game without losing his red shirt status Once again, I've said from the get-go, he's not going to be able to get this magical waiver, and it's going to be up to him to play in this game or not. According to Brody Miller, it is in Nuss's power to decide whether or not he wants to play in this game. The team desperately needs him because we look like we are going to start a walk-on quarterback. If I were to guess between the two of them, Matt O'Dowd and Tavian Falk, I would guess Matt O'Dowd, but once again, it could easily be Tavian Falk. And then, of course, we have John Trey Kirkland, who could be the quarterback, who was an unbelievable quarterback at Lutcher High School, won two state championships, but he was more of a runner instead of a thrower. He only completed 50% of his passes. But going a little bit deeper into uh, John Trey Kirkland's passing numbers, they're actually a lot better than what I initially thought. He averaged 181 passing yards per game. That's actually 20 more than what Max Johnson averaged per game in high school. And of course, uh, John Trey averaged 70 plus rushing yards per game, which is a lot for a quarterback. So 252 yards per game in high school. Once again, that's a completely different level. But it wasn't as if John Trey wasn't a productive quarterback. He could go out there and really shock us all. But the bottom line is this team would be best served if Garrett Nussmeyer just played the game. But it is highly unlikely that is going to be the case. Now, what's really weird about it, will he even dress out? I I don't know. But 
as you guys have seen, once again, with this photo, he has been a part of the bowl preparation, and I'm guessing he has been practicing. If I'm Garrett Nussmeyer, I'm playing this game. You are never guaranteed snaps at quarterback, especially going into next year where Miles Brennan has decided to come back. And, of course, Brian Kelly is going to go with the more experienced option. Uh, if there were to be someone you would pick to be the starter, it would be Miles Brennan. Garrett Nussmeyer, your best chance to start with everything going against LSU right now would be to win this locker room right now and be the story. You would be the story throughout the offseason if you were to find a way with this frail roster to get the job done. And the thing about it is you very well could because Kansas State's defense, while they are solid, when they played better receivers, their defense wasn't as good. And, of course, if there were a position group where LSU was fine, their wide receiver room is fully healthy and ready to go. Now, Jack Besh and BTJ joined the team a little bit later, but they will um, – be with the team for the bowl game. Nuss, if you go out there and you ball out, you very well could win the starter's job going into next season. The best tape, the best way you can impress a coaching staff is go out there and win the game. So let's get into a prediction here. The line actually opened up when the bowls were announced. LSU is a two and a half point favorite, but because of these roster stories, the line has shifted to Kansas State as a seven point favorite. And I think that number could increase with the over under set at 47. And the bottom line is you have to lean Kansas State in this matchup simply because Kansas State has zero opt-outs. Everybody's going to play, including their two most important players, Skylar Thompson, their senior quarterback, and Deuce Vaughn, their sophomore running back. Those are the two big players, 7 and 22. And Skylar Thompson is not an incredible quarterback by any stretch of the imagination, but they were better with them than without him. When he was injured this year, they just quite frankly lost, including to a bad Texas team. But if you look at Kansas State's schedule overall, they beat the teams that they were supposed to beat, and they lost to the teams that they were supposed to lose to. And look, uh, the four bowl-eligible Big 12 teams that they lost to, three of them all three of them won their bowl games, and Iowa State lost by seven to a very talented Clemson team. So the teams that they lost to were good football teams. The teams that they beat weren't so great football teams, and that's the issue with LSU is with the roster currently uh, the way it is now with a frail secondary without your best linebacker, without your best defensive tackle, uh, it, it's going to be tough sledding, especially as the game moves on and legs get tired. Uh, it's going to be tough with Kansas State not having any opt-outs and LSU in free fall with their depth charts. Boom, I'm looking at you. Yes, you right now okay i know one of you said that's one of your favorite part of the videos when we do that boom looking at you right now huh ah, because look this channel is as much about you as it is about my commentary and that's why the live streams are so much fun so halftime post game of the bowl game uh we're gonna get down and dirty and of course i have some thoughts on mike denbrock which we will get to in just a second now it would be disingenuous for me to say that LSU is going to beat Kansas State because I would be lying to you with a straight face. It's our offensive line. None of those guys opted out, which is why I want to shout out Ed Ingram. He had every reason to opt out like TDP, Neil Farrell, and Devon Clark. I agree with their decisions. But Ed Ingram, who already has a senior bowl invite, who already has really good tape. Once again, this Texas A&M game was really dominant. And he is still going out there and potentially risking a lot of money to go put it out there one more time for our Tigers. So we better. I, I want you guys to show some love for Ed Ingram in the comment section for him putting it all out there for us. But uh, the bottom line is... 
I'm going to be cheering for LSU harder than I've ever cheered for LSU before because it's easy to for for you as a player to get riled up for any other game, but for this exhibition, which I hate people calling bowl games exhibitions, uh, look, there's not a whole lot to really get excited about here. Heck, there. I mean, most LSU fans are more excited about the basketball game with Dale Brown Court and uh, the Kentucky Wildcats on the other sideline. And a lot of you just don't care about this bowl game at all. You only care about Mike Dimbrock, Matt Kelly, Matt Kelly, Brian Kelly at Matt House, and you are perfectly reasonable to do so because this bowl game is just such an afterthought, especially with recruiting and the early signing period. This has been like the 10th or 11th thing on your mind right now. So I'm really cheering for LSU because the players that are currently playing are really putting it out there for us. With that said, we are going to lose this game. Uh, I hope we don't. I'm going to be cheering as hard as I can for LSU. I just, I mean, this is the first time Brad Davis is between the headset as a head coach. Uh, you have some lame duck coordinators coaching in this game. A lame duck staff. It's hard as a head coach to get everyone fired up when you are the only one that didn't get fired. Uh, but... Yeah, it's going to be tough, especially with Kansas State having a good coaching staff and having anybody, uh, not having anyone opt out. Kansas State will more than likely win this game. Uh, final score in this one is going to be 28 to 10. Now, let's talk about Mike Dimbrock just for a second. This is such an interesting hire to me because. Offensive coordinator and head coach symbiosis is so important to have a good relationship between the two of them. And it is without a doubt BK and Mike Dimbrock who have been at a lot of stops together. have spent more than a decade with each other. Get this opportunity for both of them having lost in the college football playoff to finally be at a job where you have the players to get you over the top. So the one thing I really like about Mike Dimbrock early in my study uh, in you know taking a deep dive and really looking at Dimbrock's resume is that he's going to come into this job really hungry with one thing left on his resume, which is a national championship. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, so, yeah, that's the first thing I really like about him. And the second thing is obviously what he's done at Cincinnati is really, really good. Now, this is why you got to subscribe and ring the bell. We have more Mike Dimbrock videos that will come out in the coming weeks where you really start to read between the lines and there are some major red flags. We'll touch on it a little bit in the live stream, um, in the post-game live stream for tomorrow night. Uh, but for right now, I am excited about it because we finally have an offensive coordinator and we do have an offensive coordinator that we know will get along well with the head coach. Whereas last year and even the year before that, especially on the defensive side of the ball, you had coordinators that we're not getting along with that Orgeron. So um, that's going to be obviously the biggest takeaway from the House Denbrock hires. Boom. Hope you enjoyed this preview. I wish I could tell you LSU's going to win tomorrow, but, you know, it's it's not unreasonable for LSU to shock the world because Kansas State isn't just this unbelievable team, but we shall see what happens. Let's do it. Let, let, shock me. Shock the world. Let's go. It is power hour. LSU. Boom. Oh, yeah. I think we're doing uh, some shrimp scampi tonight. Let's 